How is serotonin related to our prostate? In this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at some very interesting research that links serotonin and prostate size. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please, if you do not care about your health, please do not subscribe to my channel. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at some very interesting research that links serotonin to our prostate, in particular, how serotonin can influence the prostate size. So first of all, let's take a look at the basics around serotonin. You know I've spoken about serotonin on this channel, and you also know that I'm not a huge fan of excess serotonin due to its dampening and suppressive effects on some of the benefits of having high dopamine. So first of all, let's take a look at the basics around serotonin. We all should know by now that tryptophan, which is the essential amino acid that's found in many of our protein-rich foods, such as chicken, turkey, eggs, that tryptophan can get converted into serotonin via two main enzymes in the body. The first one we're gonna look at is tryptophan hydroxylase 1, or TPH1, which basically converts tryptophan into serotonin peripherally. So we're looking outside the brain. Some of the peripheral effects include affecting vascular tone, hemostasis, cell regeneration, heart function, organ development, intestinal motility, immunomodulation, and more. Whereas tryptophan hydroxylase 2, which is widely expressed in the brain, or CNS, essentially controls things related to depression, sleep, aggression, food intake, psychosis, anxiety, and others. So that's just a little bit about serotonin that you need to basically understand before we get into this pretty wild research. So this particular study that I want to demonstrate and highlight today was published in the Journal of Nature or Nature Journal. And basically the title was Serotonin Regulates Prostate Growth through androgen receptor modulation. Now, this particular study was published in November of 2017. This was really surprising because what they've basically uncovered is a link between serotonin and BPH, otherwise known as benign prostatic hyperplasia. Understanding the exact mechanism or the exact etiology associated with or the cause of BPH is mostly unknown. The researchers noted that serotonin is produced by neuroendocrine prostatic cells and present in high concentrations in normal prostatic transitional zones. Previous evidence demonstrated that neuroendocrine cells and serotonin are decreased in BPH compared to normal prostate. Here we show that serotonin is a strong negative regulator of prostate growth. Now I'm gonna cite more from the research study. In both models, serotonin's inhibitory mechanism was replicated by specific agonists of the 5-HT1A and 5-HT1B receptors. Since peripheral serotonin production is specifically regulated by TPH1, as I demonstrated before, we showed that TPH1 knockout mice present higher prostatic mass and upregulation of, of androgen receptors when compared to wild type, whereas serotonin treatment restored the prostate weight and androgen receptor levels. As serotonin is decreased in BPH, we present here evidence that links serotonin depletion to BPH etiology through modulation of the androgen receptor. Serotonergic prostate pathway should be explored as a novel therapeutic target for BPH. This study is really fascinating because there's a lot of research that suggests that DHT and or high estrogen or high estradiol is, you know, the major drivers behind benign prostatic hyperplasia. But perhaps now we have one more target or an additional target to look at when identifying issues associated with BPH. And it's interesting to note that you know, serotonin is a negative regulator of prostatic growth 
which means that you know they're suggesting that by restoring peripheral serotonin production it's actually going to lead to a reduced risk of bph so interestingly you know this is the the first research study that i've ever seen that sort of links serotonin with you know prostate size and this is something that men maybe should consider and this is something that even i'm quite surprised to see but i really want to obviously bring this to your attention and highlight this pretty interesting research so as far as you know takeaways relating to this video well i do want to quote another part from this particular study where it sort of says dht not linked to bph the authors quoted in a similar way intraprostatic testosterone in particular dht are not increased in BPH comparatively to normal prostate, and even the administration of testosterone in supra-physiological concentrations to um, eugonadal men, which is normal testosterone, does not induce the development of BPH, which is pretty crazy. I mean, again, we're sort of seeing that DHT is perhaps not the major you know, driver. And I've spoken about the benefits of DHT and perhaps you know, maybe estradiol or serotonin may be um, implicated in BPH or basically regulating BPH. You know, this particular research really was fascinating. If you did find this video interesting, please do share it around. I really would like to see this discussed more in the scientific community. And hopefully we get more researchers diving into this particular scenario and identifying how serotonin can sort of regulate prostatic function and size and growth. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.